You know, it's very nice that I get to crash here for a bit. I don't know what I would do without... Wait, what's that noise? I think it's coming from over here. Oh. I, I hit a light. Well, I think, I think it's a wall. Hold on, let me just... There we go. Uh, I hate when I forget light switches. It seems to be coming from this TV. Oh. Someone must have left the video on. Well, there's no harm in seeing what it is. Hey, everybody! It's me, Minecraft Man Derek, back again with top 10 most requested Minecraft updates. But before we start, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Can we just get on with the opinions so I can turn this off? Oh, almost forgot to plug the new shirt. Look at them. They're all different and shirt-like. Oh, and we sell pants now too okay is it is this thing done now can i turn it off where's the off switch oh and i almost forgot today's video was sponsored by raid shadow ah <sighs> there we go it's off you know there's been a lot of minecraft updates recently but i really wish that instead of talking about the end update or any other update they would just focus on some of the older features that need overhauling. Wait a minute. Well, they do say if you want to get something done, best do it yourself. I think I have an idea. Hey, I'm Rome. If I were to ask you what update you would want to see, in Minecraft Next, many different opinions would come to mind. Some would say an end update would be very vital and useful for the game to continue, as the end has been updated in over several years. Others would say that a inventory update should be done, as Minecraft's inventory hasn't really been changed or modified in a long, long time. Some people would even say a dimension update would be incredible, as we would now have four new dimensions to explore, rather than, well, three. <sighs> but I, unlike many other Minecraft players, have a different dream. A dream for an update that fundamentally could change both how the game is played and how we, Minecraft players, see this game. This update is called a dungeon update. I am required by law to say that when I said dungeon update, I did not mean the Minecraft game that is critically acclaimed by every single reviewer, Minecraft Dungeons. I am not required to give you this image of milk and not explain it. Shit, they're on to me. Anyway, I have always seen a dungeon update as the next big step for Minecraft in general. But you're probably thinking, okay, so you're gonna tell us all the changes and all the new structures and items you're gonna bring. But I beg to differ. What I've always found kind of weird is that mod pack videos and mod videos in general always ignore one thing, and that's the experience. You see, you can show a mod, like I could throw up the or spawn mod, right on the screen, and you know, I'm showing it, and you're not really, in my opinion, getting a feel for how the mod works, for how it is, you know, played. I feel like a lot of people feel like YouTube videos of mods can be a substitute for playing the real deal. Especially when it comes to a topic like, what's the next Minecraft update? Here's a modded example. I beg to differ. You see, a dungeon update isn't just, here's three items and a new structure. 
In my opinion, a dungeon update is much more than that. But rather than tell you what I've created, I'm gonna show you. Welcome to Minecraft's Dungeons & Daggers update. My personal hell. Now, normally, a video would start out with me getting wood, which I did, and then within seconds found replacements. So after gathering stones, it was off to find myself a new home. For a while. For some reason, I'm always particular about where I put my house. I mean, I could place it anywhere. There's tons of spots that I can show that I could have placed it. Like this one. Wait the fu But I am a man of standards. Which I tossed aside in seconds once I found this fixer-upper. Let's be honest, this video is basically 100 days, but cranked up to 11. I mean, have I mentioned the amount of pages on just enough items yet? Yeah, I know. I shat myself too when seeing it. Now, let's be honest though. I have stone tools, but I won't make it very far without armor. So being the knowledgeable hardcore player I am, I headed to the mines. I can really go to whatever mine I choose, but I found this mine close to my base, so I decided to... I am the milkman. My milk is delicious. Now, like most features, the mines have been completely changed. This is due to a mod that extends and expands the caves for miles, making them much harder to traverse, and more realistic. This also means that farming ores and fighting monsters are a lot more common around these parts, but nothing a professional can't handle. Hey, fun fact for the kiddos at home, did you know Endermen do karate now? I had no damn clue. Oh yeah, and the mine shafts have been completely overhauled too, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Literally. But before I left, I made sure to grab some diamonds. It's off a lake right next to it, of course. Wouldn't be a cave without one. Oh, we can get so much with this now. Seven diamonds, that is so much more value in this one pack now. Seven is your optimal number. So as I ventured out, I felt very, very good about myself. So you know what that means. It's house building time. No, but in all seriousness, do you know how hard it was to choose a door frame this time? Like... When I build a Minecraft house, I have so many different ideas that I go for. But for this particular Minecraft house, I went through seven different door frames. Yeah. That that was that was a thing I did. And after all that work, it was time to start dungeon crawling. The dungeons in this mod are pretty special, like this one. You know, I walked around, found an igloo with some villagers, said, Ah, this seems like a good thing to look at. Oh. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh! Oh no! We, we, don't, we don't talk about that. We, we don't talk about that anymore. Anyway, I'm gonna chat about the dungeons now. The dungeons in this mod pack spawn in many different structures, but are mostly the same underground for these overworld dungeons at least. I mean every dungeon has a different set of rooms due to procedural generation, but you know, they're still relatively similar at the end of the day. But the loot however, oh the loot is incredible by the end of these, as each dungeon has its own loot, but is relatively in the same loot table. And at the end of this exciting adventure in the dungeon, I had an enchantment table, some modded eyes of Ender, and of course, bones. <laughs> this is a pretty good haul if I say so. So you're probably wondering what's next, huh? Well, I killed some pillagers and I stopped recording the sleep. I get up. Never mind. Just, just never mind.
I should probably talk about what I'm building, since you're all probably wondering at this point. In most 100 days, your base is not the most important thing, which I think is kind of dumb. And by base, I mean your home that you live in. I mean, a lot of people say it's not about vanity, but in my opinion, your base should look always fabulous, no matter what you make it out of. So I started work on some farms to grow me a sustainable amount of food before I venture further in this world, while making the house a bit more interesting. I also want to mention that this site gets better and better as I build it. It's difficult at first to figure out what goes where with all these builds, but I think if you give it a bit of time, you'll see the developments are spectacular and fit right into place as they should. Also, do you know how hard it is to get glass windows in this world? There's like three rivers and no oceans nearby. So, you know, I'm just venturing around the entirety of my island looking for sand. Oh, and by the way, if you think, oh, well, Ronan, you know, you're near a lukewarm ocean. No, you're not near a lukewarm ocean. I'm near a normal ocean for most of the ocean that is close to me, meaning that there is no sand. So that's fun. Also, little tip with your houses. You know, when you design your ladders, be careful. I know you won't move them because nobody moves them. Then after all that work, I went exploring to find a cow. You see, I have the bad omen effect. I wonder why. So if I'm near a village, they're dead meat, as a raid will spawn, so I was off to stop that problem, only to fall down a hole. Anyway, I continued looking for, uh, you know, a while to encounter this one cow. And, you know, it took a while. We went through several different biomes. We, you know, we looked around and eventually we found one. Only to, um, find a fun fact out. Did, did you see it? Did, did you see the fun fact? The fun fact is, in this mod pack, you can't get rid of Bad Omen with milk. Did I mention that this is a hell mod pack, specifically made to make Minecraft more difficult? Meaning that, you know, I gotta wait like 15 in-game days, or you know, like around 4 hours of a real life time, just to get rid of this effect? <laughs> Yay. You know, that's fun. I mean, you know what I did after this? I looked at the achievements as I waited. Because, you know, I had the past four hours in real life. Welp, you know what time it is. No, it's not happy hour. We can't even make those drinks here. You see, if I had the milk to take away the effect, I would be doing some very important tasks. But I can't. So I might as well deal with the farming problem. Bones are a fairly useful item, allowing many advantages to the player. Such advantages are making the crops grow, the grass grow, making the sheep make the sales grow. We might make the tax grow, but relax, bro. Anything is possible with bones, yo. But you see, I don't want to, you know, work very hard. You see, bones are very difficult to get, as you basically need to kill a ton of skeletons. And you don't get that many from killing just one skeleton. Or even 20. And, let's be honest. Do you really think I'm gonna waste my life for around four in real life days just to get the best gear? Hey, hey, it's not off the table entirely. Now, I could build a mob farm, but let's be honest, the cobblestone economy is kind of dried up at the moment. But I have dungeons, and one of the pieces of the loot table that is most common is bones. So I made a plan to journey to one of my several dungeons I've found to retrieve as many as possible. So let's rattle some bones, shall we? 
Now, on a little side note, I never talked about this earlier, but these dungeons do have multiple layers to them, allowing for pretty tense situations and gross decor. Okay. Oh, what the? What the? I would like to mention that spiders can go fishing. This is an actual thing they are able to do. This has been Spider Facts with Ronan. So after, well, some more collecting of these little fossils, I emerged with a bountiful amount of loot. But I could not leave this magical force dungeon for the second I, well, you know, exited, I encountered a flock of fairy maids. I know, it's anticlimactic, but I would have been killed so easily if I didn't run to fight another day. So I left the battle to return home. And completed my quest of backpacks and bones. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that uh, I also went down to the dungeon to get a backpack. Because more inventory space is important to me. Anyway, after, you know, building my backpack and putting my bones away and turning them into bone mill, I planted tons of new crops. With these crops, I become stronger and hungrier. With each one planted. Oh, and I tried that Anemus stuff I got earlier, and, uh... Ugh, it's... a thing, I guess. After trying that catastrophe, I decided to hunt down some sheep so I could start working on a wool farm. The sheep were not easy to find or bring back, but I did eventually bring them to my compound. Uh, but I need somewhere to house them that's not close to my house because I do not want to be woken up at 2 a.m. by the word or noise that goes ba. Welcome to the Isle of Sheep, not prison. Now, after claiming this island in the name of the sheep, it was time to get to some good old fashioned roofing. A good house has a roof, and mine doesn't. So, my goal was to erect a house with the best roof possible while also making rooms for important items and skills. Now, my first new addition to this house is, well, a pretty simple and obvious one. I'm making an enchantment room. It will have everything needed and more, so we won't have to worry about any missing lapis or books. I'm also using a combination of blue and grayish wood because of color palettes. But I got bored after a while, so I started working on a small project. In this mod pack, I have added a mod called Toho Little Maids. And to access it, I have to create a mini shrine. It took a while of building, but I was able to finally summon a maid only to... Oh, shoot. I forgot the cakes. Yes, to be able to travel with your Toho buddies, you have to give them a cake. I had everything but the milk, so I took a detour to refine those cows that I found earlier that couldn't get rid of my potion effect. It took a long time, but I found those cows. And then, I tied them to my house. So that way I wouldn't lose them. I mean, come on. We've all lost cattle before. It's not easy to get them back. Then I befriended one character, and then another. Because let's be honest, the more friends, the better. We were off to a great start. Now, after getting the great advantage of having some Toho pals, it was time to move the normal cows. Hey sheep, meet your new neighbors. Play nice now. The warden would hate to see casualties. So, after building and expanding the pen for the cows, it was time to start work on the second floor again. I finished the wall, started a roof, and placed some windows, all while getting the furniture on the second floor. I also harvested my first major field of crops. With help, of course. You never know when your back's gonna give out. I then made myself some glorious bread and set out on another adventure to a nearby dungeon. Now this dungeon's a little different than the others, as it was close to the ocean, and that made it hard to traverse. But that's nothing to worry about, as I only came here for books. 
I did explore a little further down in the dungeon, but let's be honest. I don't think I should ever come back down here for a while. Mainly because these places are a chore to traverse and the enemies are stronger. Though the difficulties were rewarded as I did collect some decent loot and some diamonds before I left. You're probably wondering why I keep going to dungeons and finding diamonds. Well, you see, um, this is just a coincidence. It's like a hobby now. I mean, tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I got a 24 carat in my bed. How did it get there? I have no clue. So after that, I headed back home to do some enchanting, and the results were pretty interesting. And then, of course, a katana. So, fortune th oh, oh, come on. You spoil me. You know I'm gonna get a fortune three pickaxe if I see one. Looting three? Looting three sharpness four. Holy crap, that katana's strong. Like, it doesn't have sweeping edge, but that is a strong katana. And then prop three. Prop three's the best I can get. I then decided to put some of my great enchanted work on pedestals before heading off to the mine. You see, I need a lot of ores to continue my adventure, and because of that, I headed to the mines to find every ore possible. But you know what would make finding these ores better? Not needing them. Well, I don't know, but I've been told Uranium ore's worth more than gold I sold my cad, I bought me a jeep I got that bug and I can't sleep Uranium fever has run and got me down Uranium fever is spreading all around With a Geiger counter in my hand I'm going out to take me some government land Uranium fever has gone and got me down Ah, welcome back from the mines. How's the montage? Did you enjoy it, like the music choice? I hope you did. Because, uh, you know, it's one of my personal favorite songs from 1955. I am so old. Now, after returning home, I did a lot of, well, fun things. I chopped trees, built more of the house, mined a chunk of cobblestone for some reason. I honestly don't know why I did this other than for wall building. So I watched this back and uh, uh, I, I don't understand what I'm doing. Now, of course, like any normal person, I was getting bored doing or watching the same thing over and over again. So you know what I did? So I went to the ocean. I love the ocean. The loot is fun to gather. The fish are always fun to fish out of the water. And hell, the drowning may be annoying, but it's the closest thing we have to real danger. Other than the bubbles, of course. But the modded ocean is even better. Because it's all of that, but with a little more danger. So I ventured out, looking for anything and everything. I first found a sunken ship, with some subpar loot and a treasure map. And then I encountered these dopes. The Pillager Empire is very strong, and these pirates were no pushovers. They almost killed me several times. Hell, when their fleet ran low, they started bringing the Vindicators. <sighs> Guys, you gotta remember, I ask the questions! The loot was good on this ship, but let's be honest, the best loot I found was in the Water Temple. I don't know why these guards tried to stop me. But I handled it politely, and took their fork too, because let's be honest, these guardians shouldn't have forks. I mean, those are more dangerous than spoons. Gotta be honest, the trident is the greatest weapon in this mod pack, but it could be cool on display. I did some other stuff, mainly traveled the sea for a while, but eventually went home with my bundles of loot. Ah, finally. My status effect is fully gone. It's time. So remember those villagers we found a while ago? Well, today we're gonna move them to my base. Now, moving villagers is usually not hard. I mean, you can move them with most items. But these ones are underground, so this is a challenging aspect, but it is a very possible aspect to overcome. And with one certain object, the minecart. Yes, the minecart is basically useless for transportation, 
but here it is useful as it will be transportation for the villagers out of the igloo and into my base. But I want to save resources, so I went down to the mines to locate, well, mine, mining rails. You know, you know I, need, I need rails to push the villagers into my base. So I went down to the mine shaft to collect some. And, you know, it was pretty fun. Now, collecting these are... I am the milkman. My milk is still... Not you again. So after I collected my rails, which took a while, but after that long while, I just had enough to get this project on the road. Now, to start getting these villagers home, we need to build a safe perimeter, meaning no monsters can get in and none can get out. After that, we had to dig a railway all the way up to the surface, which did not take long. I just had to make sure it was villager ready so we didn't kill anyone. And we were set. The first villager went up with no problems. I started to construct a path to the base. Now, the reason I have to do this is so, well, we can transport them quickly and safely. So it's important to build a path to and from this area. Though this means I had to ruin the environment and mine through this hill. The places we went were very difficult to traverse, but after getting our friend in this boat here, we were able to secure the first villager. <sighs> Though the second one was a more difficult one to move. He kept escaping, avoiding me, but he eventually was moved over to my base. Now, after all these troubles, it was time to get the greater task at hand finished. And that was building the trading hall. Now, getting the land for the trading hall would be very easy. Just move some dirt around, and boom bada bing, we have a trading hall. But before I can dig out the area and, well, strand these two in there, I thought I would name them. I named the first villager Kindle for their many kind actions, and I named the second one Gerald. Nobody likes you, Gerald. Ha. 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 Getting them in there was a bit of a difficult process, but not to worry. I'm an expert on this. I also started building the walls and surrounding area to look inviting. I wanted it to be modeled after a village. So I worked hard to keep it on a simple yet complex, you know, kind of build. <sighs> I made sure the walls were plastered with wood and the ceilings with stairs. Or at least I tried. I later returned with my pal Koeshi to finish up the walls of the room these villagers will stay in for a while. After all, stone is not where the heart is. There was a cycle from then onwards. Feed them, chop trees, work on the house, farm some crops, and then go back to work a bit more on the trading hall before feeding them again. That went, well, on for a while, till I finally made Kindle, the kindest villager, our first trading villager. She shall make mending books for us at a cost to none. I hope Gerald's not mad about that. I then bought mending books to then put on my sword. But of course, every sword needs a name, so I called mine the 47th, after the tale of the 47 Ronin. I also finally created a sugarcane farm due to how little sugarcane I have. I also upgraded my armor a bit before setting my eyes on a new area of land. I went to the underground, I didn't fall. I wanted to look around this hallway's long. I was really digging around here to find some enchantment books. I need upgrades, so this is the best option. Hell, I even found a god apple on my way out. Wait, what? Yeah, while getting a farmer, these golems appeared. I think they're a way of Gerald trying to escape, but they don't work against me. Hell, he still tried walking out and still failed. Okay, what now? As the great Luke the Notable once said, walls are the greatest part of any build. And today, I put that to the test. Walls are essential now due to me having a little underground village. If something goes wrong, the villagers can easily be killed, and we don't want that. So what did I do? 
I constructed the finest wall you've ever seen, that's what I did. I also used that fancy stuff, also known as stone bricks, which in my opinion is the best wall to build with. Mmm, so fancy. After finishing construction on the walls, I decided to head down back to the good old trading hall to see how... What? What? Gerald? What did you do? Ha. 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 Well, you're crazy. So after that happened, I gathered a few to stand guard, only to realize that, well, more of them were spawning as I was constructing my house. I didn't know how this happened. I didn't know why Gerald kept making them. But I think they're starting to look like an apocalypse. So to distract myself, I kept getting more villagers' jobs. To be honest, this is what I did for most of the recording. I needed so much gear that this is all I worked on. The first two villagers were a cartographer and a forester. Both are very useful, as one provides maps and the other provides wood. And since my money was made mainly from farming and a librarian, I was doing pretty good adding these two to the bunch. I eventually took a break to do some treasure hunting. I knew if I kept doing villager stuff forever, you would get bored. So I set off on a little bit of an adventure. It was pretty good. Another modded Eye of Ender, a few material goodies. I also scouted a new dungeon that I ran from due to it being, well, too powerful for me to even try and test my might against. This is getting out of hand, so I used a hitbox scanner to see how many there were. And there were a lot. So I had the idea of, oh, will they gang up on me if I hit them? Yeah, they could if they wanted to. So I executed just a few of them. I did feel bad, but this is Gerald's escape plan. And to be honest, this is for everyone's safety, not my own. But as I required a Fletcher, I went back into the fray, only to watch this. Fight Gerald's army, come on. Get in the boat. Don't listen to him. Oh god, Gerald's dying. Oh shoot, Gerald's dying. I don't think I can stop him. Gerald, what are you doing, man? Yep. Gerald died doing what he loved. Escaping and building clay golems. Was it ironic that his bald ended this way? Kind of? I mean, who knows? I'm just happy that the golems, in a sense, are free from Gerald's reign and influence. I hope. I know, everyone wants to see more dungeon crawling, but sadly I have to inform you that it is Villager Grinding Time! So no dungeon footage for now. Today we're going to finish the roster with a butcher. This is due to the meat market being so useful right now. I mean, I can feed myself for a week now. I also decided to have another villager be hired as an armorsmith due to my riches. But you're probably thinking, but Ronin, you don't need an armorsmith. Well, you see, I gave him a job. <laughs> for fun. I then built my house, expanding the villager trading hall even more, and continued to break the modded economy. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. While the profits come in, our sadness can't be heard. If you can't tell yet, this whole recording is just so fun. I did trading, and more trading. I golem-proofed the trading hall and did more trading. After building so much, you would think I would do something else. Well, you're in luck, because I found some coal. It's not much, but for a humble man, it means the world. Now you're probably wondering, what are we going to do with all these profits? Well, I'll tell you, we're going on an adventure. <laughs> Hold on, let me do some sweeping of all this litter and we'll be good to go. Oh, wait, I, I almost forgot. I need to, uh, I need to clean my basement before we go. You know, it's, it gets very dusty down there below the villagers. We just need to sweep all that up. Ah, man, I, I totally forgot. I gotta resize my map. You know, it's, a, it's too difficult to read it from, uh, you know, this angle. 
Maybe if I fix it, it'll look better. I almost forgot. I have to do my taxes. I, with my Toho buddies, am searching for something. That something is a pillager fort. There are legends of great loot within its halls, and I want a piece of that pie. Till I found this ocean, and forgot Koeshi and Yukari. Welp, we're screwed. I encountered many things on my travels, such as ships, ships, land, and water. There were so many sights to see as well. Trees, grass, dirt. I could have sworn there was a roadside that said, World's biggest ball of yarn here. Hey look, an iceberg. And yet, I see nothing around here. This is some adventure. Okay, if I'm going to be on the road this long, I might as well put on some tunes. Because, well, we got places to go and sights to see. Boat, 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 boat. Boat, 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 this boat, 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 is the boat, boat, boat song. Boat, boat, it's a song boat, 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 about boats. Boat, 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 There's none boat, boat, of them boat, boat, around here that's pretty cool. This is the boat, 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 boat song boat, boat, and we're boat, in boat, the water. Boat, 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 this boat, is the boat. boat, boat, boat Song. Where is my GPS? I have no idea where I'm going. Where will I go when this is done as well? I don't know where my home is. I've been spinning around in circles. Yeah. We were getting close. I think. To be honest, the color orange is throwing me off. And there it is. The Illager Fortress. Around four stories tall, it truly showed the Illagers knew how to build and how to decorate. Though, within seconds, I was attacked. While, of course, just walking around the premises. I couldn't stop but admire the building. Of course, these pillagers didn't want it, me to admire and compliment it for some reason. I mean, come on, your building looks beautiful. The building even had these blue-robed fellows. So, wanting to conquer the dungeon, I took a small pot shot at them, not knowing the trouble I would get into. I can't see! The battles were rough, but I left the compound pretty happily. I got another special Eye of Ender and some totems, making the trip well worthwhile. Though I have a lot of stab wounds. So what did I do on my journey back home? Well, I stole a portal because it was too dangerous for a wizard to have. So I'll take it instead as it would be in even worse hands with me. And that's about it. I went home and found Yukari and Koeshi just chillin', so we hanged out and fished. As I thought, well, you know, 
Going through the forest blind is a horrible idea. Fishing was pretty fun. Caught a lot of useful supplies, but more importantly, just chilled out in the ocean. We then went home for a bit to wind down after our adventure and fishing. Only for me to journey again, looking for a pillager outpost only to realize that modded Minecraft generates very differently to its vanilla counterpart. So I journeyed home again after being stupid and a little dum dum. But we ran into some trouble with these boats battling again. So what did I do? Well, I fought both parties before burning down both ships. Till they were none. Then I headed home. Now I mostly just sat around at this point, did some dungeon crawling, which was fun, but not really exciting. But didn't find much loot or gear. I did some farming and built, but still nothing really happened. So I decided to retire for the night, but not without lighting some portals. Because after my little nap, I'm going someplace real warm and cool.